We have turned Pan Road around right now. Pull it.
I want to welcome you this morning, near afternoon, to this Thanksgiving service. We just want you to know that the bathroom facilities are to your right. It's that side that you will find the bathroom facilities. We ask that those with their cell phones, we ask that you be kind enough just to put them on silent or vibrate so that they won't interfere with the system that we operate here at the church. This is the house of the Lord and we want you to respect when we are in the presence of a holy God. The opening song, Sister Hewitt. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, let's finish it. It is well. All right, so now we're going to, the balloon is there, so I'll stay right here. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea pillars roll, whatever my thoughts thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my thanks for this day. We thank the Lord that you have ordained it, that we should be here at this Thanksgiving service. Father God, you have loaned Patricia unto us for these years. You have seen it fit now to call her to rest. 
I ask, Lord, that as she lay resting, the family members, dear God, will see you, dear Jesus, in your full glory. As she lived her life here on earth, dear God, it had impacted, dear God, upon even her children. I ask that they too may make that bold step to accept you as Lord and Savior before it is eternally too late. Bless them as they mourn their loss now, dear God, which is human. But help them, God, that they will put themselves in that position that when they shall have died, it will be well also with their souls. Take charge of this day's proceedings, we pray. We ask that it will be done to your name's glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, maybe seated. Today is just a special occasion. Yes, as we mourn, we don't mourn as those persons without hope. Because we are comforted by the words of the Lord that any individual who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, once they go to sleep, then when Jesus Christ returns, then they too will be called forth. As we now go into the program, we're letting you know that persons who are going to be using and participating in the program, you can look use the platform. And uh, we're asking you, please, to let this be a moment of celebrating the life of, as we affectionately call her, Pat, but we know her as Patrice Elaine Davis. Our first lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58, and this will be done by Michelle Butler, family friend, followed by tributes, and the first will be that of Pamela Davis, sister. Thank you. Good afternoon. First lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians. First lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, reading from verse 50 to 58. And it says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does in corruption inherit neither does corruption inherit in corruption behold i saw you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall we shall not all sleep we shall all be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall rise in corruptible we shall be changed for the corruptible must put, to, must put on corruption and his, cor and his normal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and his mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory, O death, where is thy, is thy sting? O oh, graves, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 58 and last. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, for as much as you know that thy labor is not in vain in, in the Lord. Here and the reading of the Lord. Amen. We continue with the tributes at this time. We're inviting Pamela Davis, sister, to join us, followed by Lorraine Johnson, for daughter, and we also will be having Jonathan Bartley JP, and ask that you come in that order. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. 
I was reading the book that the Lord once said, the world was falling and the book I'm done, but wise is a man that wake up on the Lord. But when I go to my God in prayer, he has shown me that he's right there. Whatsoever may come will soon be true. In the arms of sweet deliverance, I want to lay my heavy burden down and wait my Lord all about. And when my troubled days are done, in the land somewhere beyond the star, in the arms of sweet deliverance, in the arms of sweet deliverance, I'll be rest by and by. Is Lorraine here? Lorraine Johnson, followed by Jonathan Archie. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs>
around the throne tonight. Let me say good morning to Pastor Black and Pastor Richard, other ministers in the congregation, and to the elders, to all my sisters and brothers, family members, also to the principal and members of staff from the Montreal Primary School. Um, pleasant good morning to you all. Oh, good afternoon. It is said, wise men came from the East. And I take it also that wise women came from the West. <laughs> to meet those wise men in the East. Pat's daughter, Miss Brown, she came to us from the West and she stopped in Bontiol. So I am here from Bontiol to give my condolence to the family of Pat. And just to let you know that we the people of Bontiol, we are a friendly set of people. And we acknowledge and appreciate those who come to share their labor with us. Especially those who come to labor with our children, who is our future. We are here today to give our condolence and to say to you, thank you for lending us Pat. It's a short time that she has spent with us. But I also want you family members to know that for us in Bontiol, we look at an hour as a day, a day as a week, a week as a month, a month as a year. So the short time we acknowledge it as a very long time spending with us. She was a caring person and not only caring but before permanent um, status. She would visit on a weekend and of course her daughter is my good friend. She would bring pudding and the fish. So I said she was a good baker and I enjoy it. But, as it is said in the Bible, this place is not our home. We are just stranger passing through. And that each one of us, we have an appointment with God. And I want you to know that it is not yet bad that Pat has come over to wake um, to Bontial and do why she is gone. It's only that her appointment is before us. And one day too, we will have our appointment. She has answered the call of God. It was God who called her out of this world and put his loving arms 
around her. It is said that there are people when it comes to the time to leave this earth, the life they live, they are so tormented that even sometimes the doctors and the nurse have to tie them in the bed. The testimony I have received from those who were near path, she has passed away peacefully. Which means that the life that she has lived was a peaceful life with God. And so I want to say to you, family members, for a short time, we thank you for lending us Pat in Bontiol. Yes. So far, I say, the Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and give her peace until we meet again. Thank you, family members. God bless you. It's always a blessing to leave behind a trail of blessing. And family members, you are the recipients today of a life well lived. We still continue with the tributes at this time. We have a little slot still open for family members and friends. So at this time, if Sean is here or Tiffany, we'll be able to facilitate you at this time. Yes. And uh, this is Brother Sean Jemison from the church that Sister Pat attended. So bless us, my brother. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm a good friend of Patricia, and I'll be singing on behalf of her children. Jesus, please come fast. Lies are sick, sick, and without your help, he will not last. Mary and Martha watch their brother die. They waited for Jesus. He did not come, and they wondered why. The death watch was over, buried for days. Somebody said, he'll soon be here. The Lord's on his way. Martha ran to him. And then she cried, Lord, if you had been here, you could have healed him. He'd still be alive. But you're four days late, and all hope is gone. Lord, we don't understand why you But his way is God's way, not yours or mine. And isn't it great when he's four days late, he's still in time. Jesus said, Martha, show me the grave. But she said, Lord, you don't understand. He's been there for days. The great stone was rolled back. Then Jesus cried. Lazarus, come forth. 
Then somebody said, he's alive, he's alive. You may be fighting a battle of faith. You cry to the Lord, I need you now, but he has not appeared. My friend, don't be discouraged. He's still the same. He'll soon be here. He rolled back the stone and called out your name. He's four days later. I got his Lord. God's way, not yours or mine. And isn't it great when he's four days late, he's still in time? Sing the chorus, but he's four days late, and all hope is gone. Lord. God's way, not yours or mine. And isn't it great when he's four days late? And isn't it great when he's four days late? Isn't it great when he's four days late? Or God and time. Tiffany had the same song to sing, you know. Yes. So therefore, the request is for another family member to take the place of Tiffany or a friend, if you are here. Um, all right. So at this time, we are going to be moving on then. But I want you to remember that song. No matter what you're going through, God is always on time. Okay, very good. All right, so somebody's coming. Yes. This is a, a good moment, you know, reflecting on the life we lived. And so, therefore, with all that is happening, we are one people. And we are supporting today the families and the friends who are here. Yes. Very good. Let me hear you say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let all things that have breath say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
asked to, I don't know her name, but she was asked to come and sing, and then she was looking for support. And she was somewhat timid, but then her supporter took over and pushed her along. So you know that, your sisters? Oh, nice. Oh yeah, that reminds me of me and my sister, right. So in life, we need a little push, and that's in the right direction. All right, so we continue at this time. The second lesson, Ecclesiastes 9, 1 through to 10. Me and names the friend. Cassia. All right, if I say, say your name, that's what your name. And what is our last name? Same thing. Please take your stand. So we take Bonte Hall Primary and Infant School, Abigail Malcolm, Milton Mouse, and the Lucy SDA Church in that order. Miss 
Patricia Davis family. I met Miss Davis before she came to work at school with us. As Mr. Bartley alluded to, whenever she came there, she would take pudding for us. Or whenever Sheena would come down and come back up, pudding was always coming for us. But in September of this year, this, last year, sorry, thank you. In September of last year, Miss Davis joined, at, joined us at school as the cook. Unfortunately, I was not there to work directly with her because I was on my vacation leave, but I met Miss Davis on several occasions at the canteen. Miss Davis was one person she was very dedicated to her job. She is always there early every morning. And sometimes, I, because I live on the school's compound, sometimes I will go over in the evenings and so Miss Davis will be at work until all five o'clock when she should have finished working from one o'clock, one, two o'clock. She was always there. When Miss Davis is coming to work, she was well put together. You could not tell that Miss Davis was not going to work in an office. And when she came, she would change her clothes that she wears to work. And then she changes into her other clothes that she would cook in. And then she would change again to go home. I did not get the opportunity, as I said, to taste any of her meals. But I heard that her meals were very sumptuous and they were enjoyed by all. Sheena, thank you for taking Miss Davis to Bounty Hall to share with us. And Sheena's spouse is also a member of staff at the Bounty Hall Primary and Infant School. And they loaned Miss Davis to us for a short while. And we are very appreciative of that. And may her soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine upon her. This afternoon, we are going to bless you with a song. I got to understand that this was Miss Davis's favorite song. She would sing it every day while she was in the canteen. So we're here to bless you with that song. All right, I'm not a singer. Mrs. Beasley is going to lead us in the singing. Okay, thanks. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord Jesus. You've been in the Just hold on. 
just hold on to Jesus and ride out your storm. So no matter what the challenges are, remember that Daddy Jesus is right there to take you through it. Abigail Malco, is she here? Oh, officiating ministers. Officiating ministers, the bereaved family. Let me acknowledge Mr. Milton Mans, the church members, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Good afternoon. Proverbs 30 states, Proverbs 31 states, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Comrade Patricia, Patricia Davis, known to me as Comrade Pat, she was a loving woman, a humble soul. She was one who would give her last. Even if it's mean, she wouldn't have any after. When you see Comrade Pat, she always has a smile. You could never tell her those moments. And I want to say to the church before I go any further that Comrade Pat was a good community person. She was loved by the young, the old, the middle, the indifference, everybody. And whenever she would turn on that stove to cook, you would be waiting on the meal because you'll be getting a good plate of food to eat. It was well looked after with love. Chin is my good friend who is Comrade Pat's daughter. And when you would visit Wharf Road, the first thing she would say, boy, mommy, I go come in. And she go carry on holding by the side. I would leave because we wanted to get something nice to eat whether it was pudding, because it would be the best. And the day when Comrade Chin called me and said, Abby, Mommy has passed. I said to her that God knows best. He knows why he took her home this early. He knows what she was going through. She was always upbeat, but deep inside, she was in pain. So God knew why he brought her home before time. He knows. And I want to say to the family, it is never easy, especially to lose a mom. But She's in a better arm. She's in a better place. And God has taken her home to a resting place. Heaven has gained an angel, a pure soul. We we'll all miss her. Thank you very much. Officiating ministers and elders, Mr. Abigail Malcolm, Mr. Bartley, it's a long time not seeing him. How are you? Members of the bereaved family, my brothers and sisters in Christ, when I look at the outpouring of love inside and outside, we are celebrating a life and we say to God, be the glory. It's a testimony of whom the person is. I grew up right at the barroom there with the Davis and Samuel family. It is said that weeping may endure for a night, but our joy cometh in the morning. And so to the family, I extend my sincere condolences. You have lost a loved one. And I can say, my family have asked me to extend those abroad, asked me to extend their sincere condolences because we regard ourselves as family because we grew up together. Their home was my home, my home was their home. And when you talk about food and eating, we used to eat out of the same pot. And so she has left her legacy 
hearing the testimonies from the school, from the community. She has left a testimony, she has left a legacy for her children and her grandchildren and generation yet unborn, all her relatives. Not a financial legacy, a legacy of hard work, decency, character, and you can say all that is best, the accolades. And so we salute her. And so we say to the children and grandchildren and the rest of the family, celebrate a life. Because we know that God is in his wisdom will grant her a place of final wish. So take comfort. Cry if you may. Because Jesus wept at Lazarus' grave. And it speaks volume when someone can cry. You have lost a loved one, a great one. And let us cherish her memories. And say thanks be to God. For the unspeakable gift of part. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. First thing I have to do is to ask all those that are coming from Hanover, Dry Hill, Rose Hill, and the Lucy Seventh-day Adventist Church, please stand at this moment. All those coming from Hanover, those on the outside, right, they are already standing, and there are some under the tree out there socializing. Thank you. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, those from Bounty Hall, isn't this a message? I want to tell you that right now our church, the church that Sister Pat was a part of, we are having convention and we decide, those of us that are here, we decide that we must make a representation at the funeral service of Sister Pat. Not even convention could stop us from coming here. <laughs> Having met and known Pat, she deserves much more than this. I am speaking this afternoon twofold. I'm representing the community of Dry Hill, Rose Hill, and the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Lucy. I start with the community. The Bible says, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. For henceforth they rest from their labor and their works do follow them. I'm going to ask the children of Pat now to stand. Where is Peter? Peter is outside, I assume. Chin, Sheena, where they are? Where are the other children? Right, she's at the door. Guess Peter is outside with the masses. Thank you. Your mother did well. Amen. You may be seated. And dare any of you children to go contrary to the life that your mother had lived. Pat came to Dry Hill many years ago. Dry Hill, Rose Hill. And when strangers come to your community, Sometimes many people beat old pan when they're gone. This one, Sister Pat, we didn't beat any old pan when we heard that Pat had left the community because Pat came and added to the community of Dry Hill. She has left some lovely children to remind us of who she was. Pat came as a comrade, but she left also as a Christian. Amen. Yes. Amen. She. Thank you. Pat came and aligned herself. She realized that life cannot continue like that. And I want all of you to know Amen. that beyond out of Christ, Amen. there is nothing. Amen. It is now the silly season. Green and red, they run up and down all over the place. But don't forget that Jesus is still alive. Amen. 
not came to dry him and rose him, and she aligned herself to the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Lucy. She used to visit us, and she was implored to give her life to the Lord. And unlike many persons who would run away, she accepted Christ, and she was a baptized member of the church. So the score is settled. There is no need to ask if or but, if she had made it right with her Lord. All that we see out there is only her body. We know the breath goes back to God. And she is resting now until the resurrection morning. When, if faithful she had been up to the point that she died, she will be in that first resurrection. Amen. Family members, thank you for having loaned Pat to us. She was a good soul. She was a kind-hearted person. And she was also generous. She was not one of those that made noise at church. But she came, she worshipped, and she went home. Friends, what can we say? She had lived a good life. She had lived a good life. She had not reached 60, but she was close to that. She had enough time to make it right with her God. Family members, follow suit and take a leaf out of the book of Sister Pat. May her soul rest in peace and light perpetual. Sorry about that. May her soul rest in peace until the resurrection morning. We don't believe in light perpetual. On behalf of the citizens of Jai, we say thanks to you for having loaned her to us. Thank you, family members, your church on behalf of the pastor, the officers and members, and two of the elders, three of us as elders, we are here this afternoon. We say to you, keep hope. She is not gone without any hope. Give your hearts to the Lord. I, I admonish you to take a leaf out of her book because those things that she did, you can do it also. Until we see her again, I implore you all to follow behind her. Give your lives to the Lord. That when that first resurrection, when the trumpet shall sound and she shall rise, you will meet her again. Continue and God bless you. Amen. Thank you very much, Elder Fletcher. It's now time for all of us to contribute or to pay our part and so we'll be collecting an offering. We have been listening to and normally at the funeral service we know that the offering is in aid of the welfare department all right of this church. Not going to go see we're all one body but it will assist in this side of the vineyard. And so I'll invite the the deacons if I can't find deacons from here I know Lucy yes Lucy Deacons they're here and we are also going to go on the outside too yes. because the pockets and the, the, the money is heavy in the pockets on the outside so we need to collect it and let it do good all right let us pray before we begin let us pray our great god and father of mankind indeed we are truly grateful that we can gather in this fashion for the life of your daughter your people will now contribute to your cause. May it go towards the furtherance of your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to lift our voices and sing in this beautiful hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. So even if you don't have a program, this is a song that we all know quite well. So let's sing it together. Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Let's look for us. This is my 
Lisa Samuels Foster and Felicia Samuels James, her nieces of the seas, will take them at this time, uh, followed by Stephanie Brown, daughter, and Janelia Davis, niece. So the Mito Samuels Foster and Felicia Samuels James, decked out in their pink, will take them at this time. share our precious memories of Patricia Davis, who we endearly call Auntie Pat. Afternoon, everyone. Auntie Pat was a loving and kind-hearted aunt. She had never allowed us to feel unwelcome. Her smile and the son of my niece from a man are always heartwarming. I remembered her very jovial and observant. But if she's comfortable around you, she will share a lot. She loved our family. The many times we encountered each other, we spoke about the goodness of God. And she would encourage me to keep the faith. I will not hear my niece. I will not get a hug or a smile, but I pray that you are, sorry, but I pray that you are smiling in the arms of God. And depart, your life was a blessing. Your memory is a treasure. You are loved beyond words and miss beyond measure. And depart, had a beautiful aura about her, one that made her approachable and so easy to love. It's possible that it's the natural love she exuded as an aunt that made us so drawn to her. Her nature easily showed that she had a relationship with God as she displayed grace and faithfulness. Auntie Pat can be remembered for her many visitations to Darling Street as she always made it a point of her duty to stop by whenever she is in town. Best believe that she is always bearing gifts, and one in particular I always look forward to when it's in season is the galore of mangoes she would take with her and distribute. I always admire the love and care she had for her family, especially the one she showed Cosman and Altiman Samuels whenever she stopped by our residence. It's like Auntie Pat had to see everyone before heading back home. Our conversations still ring in my head because she was always so concerned. So concerned that she was there to comfort the family in any trying times. I remember her sharing an experience she had at a villa and she ended with, we soon get another one. That showcased her hardworking and tenacious spirit. I can also vividly remember walking down Great George Street one day, and I would always walk with my head straight, so sometimes I would miss one passing. And one day I went down the road and was coming back up, and something made me turn my head where we both made eye contact. And I remember her saying, oh, I think you're going to pass me again. We both drowned in laughter. She was an aunt that made her knees feel loved, and for that, she's forever cherished and our last conversation was at the funeral of her late nephew. She was seated on a banking and I was walking by and saw her and stooped down. She indicated she was having issues with one of her legs when I asked if she was okay and we hugged. We hugged for a good long while before Stephanie drove by and picked her up. To this day, I can feel that hug. She knew I was genuinely concerned and my love for her ran deep. And I got it all back in that one hug. Auntie Pat, you are missed. The Lord saw it fit to rid you of the pain you were remaining strong through. And the Lord took you home. I wish we had longer with you, but appreciate the impact you've left on all of us.
Stephanie Brown and Jaleel Davis. for being here. Um, you all know that Patricia did not miss one funeral. So if she was um, to know that you guys are here, she would really appreciate it. But we appreciate on her behalf. All right, so her grandchild insists that she wants to sing a song. So bear with me. to say with so little time because how can I sum up a lifetime of memories into just one day or even for just a few minutes but let me start by saying Mumi was a prayerful woman she not run. when it come on to God she not pray about that and if she's sick if she don't get to reach her 
Fear Church or Lucy, she definitely I'll find one in a sub. But she is a never gonna miss, um, she never gonna miss an opportunity to serve God. She was never too talkative, but once you get to know her at Donny Dunn, she will call and be on the phone for hours. Growing up, mommy always believed in don't spare the rod and spoil the child because I get my own share. She didn't like corporal punishment as we can always hear her warning, wait till we hold you and never do a thing when she hold you. I even see that when I slap my kids, she would say, where you lick them for? You want to lick yourself, let you pick them alone. We were never short on love because no matter where we were, she would find us. Because she had to work, I spent most of my life in South. And trust me, every week, mommy dear South, when she come in, mango, banana, chicken, plum, breadfruit, or whatever season it was, she now come empty handed. Mommy loved her family and friends. It showed. She showed kindness wherever she went. And if she had your number, you sure want prayer or a Bible quote a man in time. Something of God in the morning. Try not make a mistake and tell her nothing bad about her kids. Grandchildren are her family, especially her nieces. She ever have your up, that me know. Because I have gotten the length of her tongue due to this. She was there for everyone in whatever means necessary and in whatever category to fill in the gap. You can always count on her for a song at a funeral. I don't think she ever missed any. It's just a pity I can't give her one of the songs where she normally sings at a funeral. Because she alone gets to sing in my nice family. <laughs> to, my, to my mother, I loved you dearly in life and I will love you forever in death. I would give anything just for you, just to hear the voice note with you singing and praying for us one more time. We love and miss you, mommy. Sleep on and take your rest. Good afternoon, everyone. Just a little remembrance to my aunt. In the gentle embrace of time's passage, we fondly remember your beloved aunt. Her, her spirit adorned with kindness and grace touch our lives with a profound warmth that lingers in our hearts. As we reflect on the cherished moment shared, we find solace in enduring love that she bestowed upon us. In the tips of our, our memories, she remains a vibrant thread, waving a legacy of love and fond remembrance that time cannot diminish. Rest in peace. All right, and just to continue, um, I don't know what is happening today, but the songs, um, Patricia had the songs, Mommy had songs because she loved gospel. So persons would know her favorite song, so does um, the same song with Tiffany and Sean. It's the same case with mine, with Bounty Hall, Primaries, and Infants. So because one of her favorite songs, aside from the news came to Jesus, was right out your storm. So because Monty Hall did that tribute already, I will ask Samoya to sing another song on my behalf. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon, church. Good. It is really a pleasure to be here. Um, Stephanie, she is my co-worker, but also a friend. And to be honest, I don't know much about her mom, but since I've been here, I have gotten a lot. And it's good to go to funeral these days and hear that somebody's a God-fearing person, right? Yes. Amen. So what I want us to always remember and take away from these things is that God is real, yeah. right? So even though we're crying and you know, it's almost a feeling because how can a mother's tender care cease toward the child she bears, right? 
So as a minister today, it's not about me or about Miss Pat. But the song that I'm about to minister, it will just reflect the person she was. Because trust me, she was going through a lot based on what I got to understand. And she held the faith. All right? So just bear with me, okay? Like a ship sailing onward on a journey so far and long, so far from shore, so far from home.
my church. Thanks to Sister Pat, even though she's dead, she has brought bringing some persons that would never come to church to hear one word. That is one good thing about funeral services. It brings people together. So God will kill some of us to save some people. We can only save some of us when hear the word. When we come to funeral. Because brethren and friends, visitors, we will have no excuse. So God has a way of bringing us out. So you run from God. He knows how to bring us back. Oh boy, the program continues. We'll be having a musical item now, a trio from the Lucy Seventh-day Adventist Church, followed by Unity, which will several persons will now sing from Lucy Church. No one get into any problems. Followed by the Unity, which will be done by Natalie Curlew Winter, a family friend. The program continues. Good afternoon, church. We are from the Lucy SDA Church, and we are here to celebrate the life of our late sister, Patricia Davis, who is no longer here with us, but she has lived a good life. And to those who here are still in the land of the living, can you say it is well with your soul? Well, we are here to ask you a few questions and give you a few advice also. And our question to you is, Have you read Sir God's Christian for your final destiny?
good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. To the elders, the pastor, families, nieces, nephews, cousins, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I stand before you today to share some of the fond memories and pay tribute to our beloved Patricia Elaine Davis, affectionately called Pat or Gabby Ears by her loved ones. Born on the ninth day of April, 1967, the youngest of the set of twins for Dorothy, Evadne, McPherson, and Vincent Davis. She was surrounded by love as they had a big family, quite a lot of siblings and relatives. She would leave home from time to time to stay with her cousin, Ahind, and others, all while attending the senior school now known as God for Stuart High. <coughs> Excuse me. Growing up, Patricia was very ambitious. She never stayed in one area. She always seek better opportunities after meeting Wayne, who was her high school sweetheart. She gave birth to her first child, Kareen Wilson, otherwise known as Chin. However, she moved on when things did not work out with Wayne Wilson. She moved back home with her mom and family. That's where she met a Hanoravian man, Everett, who in turn took both Patricia and Chin to Hanover, where Pat fell in love with the countryside. They begot their first son, Ricardo Petgrave, Ricky. At this time, Patricia was a stay-at-home mom. Being, being in a new environment, which would prove difficult for most persons, was never a challenge for Patricia. She was a wholesome soul. She interacted with everyone she met. She was warm and kind-hearted. She eventually met some friends in the neighboring community of Rose Hill, which is Dry Hill. Dry Hill was, some, was just a stone away where Pat would always meet up with friends. While at Dry Hill, she met the love of her life, Simon Brown. While at Dry Hill, sorry, they became great friends, then ventured into a relationship when it went sober with Everett. Pat, Simon lived together for over 23 years where they had three kids together, Sheena Brown, Garth Brown, Peter, in the, and their wash belly, Stephanie Brown, otherwise known as Squench. Patricia became a workaholic as more kids came into the picture to take care of. Her motto still stand, one hand can clap. She went to work, whether it was staying with her family's kids working at Jackie Factory, the free zone, the hotels, or even villas. She was never one to stay in one place, as she was a go-getter. She was a family person, making sure whenever she visited Westmoreland, whether it was mango season, apple, plum, banana, breadfruit, or whatever season it was, all if she happy take out Simon chicken then. <laughs> should I walk to should I walk and distribute to the entire family from Darling Street go to Seaton Crescent. And where and anywhere her kids live, no matter the parish, she's gonna make sure they were straight. When things ended with Pat and Simon, she developed even a closer relationship with God. She decided it was time to answer his calling and she gave her life solely to the Lord at the Lucy Seven Day Adventist. She was also a shy person, but when it came to time to praise God, she was the loudest. She was never ashamed of God. You know from the morning messages, every morning, whether she was sick or not, she lived a life serving not herself, but others. A life well lived as her kids, grandkids, 
sisters, brothers, nieces, nephews can all attest to this. Patricia died leaving her five children, which I called the name earlier before, and eight grandchildren. Brittany, Calicia, Alfonso, Tishani, Tricia, Nahalia, Zahar, and Renzo, and a host of relatives and friends. Your journey on this earth has ended, but your strong, your story continues through each of us. You will always be remembered, always be loved. Your legacy will forever inspire us. And as I close, I want to tell each and every person, thanks for coming out today to give strength to the daughters and the brothers of the late Pat and her brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews, friends and cousins or church families. I forgot to mention church family. So as I close, I ask you, please remember the families in your prayers. Sleep on, rest well until we meet again. That was well done. We have sing, we have sung songs, we have listened to persons singing, we contributed to the work of the Lord. It is now time to hear from the Lord. Amen. We couldn't have allowed you to come here and go back so so so. Right. Could make you go back and hear something from the Lord. Amen. So it is now time and I ask that you keep your seat, remain where you are, because none of us know if this is our last message. None of us know. So this afternoon to speak to us is a son of the soil. I speak of our intern, our junior pastor. He is the junior pastor for the Sheffield District of Seventh-day Adventist Church. He hails from a nearly say the city of Negril. Because Negril is on its way in becoming a city. He works, he's, he works in the Sheffield district along with Pastor Delgado Black. Pastor Zigario Richards is here this afternoon to speak to us. He will not be talking on his behalf, but he'll be speaking on behalf of the Lord. I invite you to give him your undivided attention. But before he comes, before he tells us what God tell him to tell me. We will now have a song of meditation. And I can tell you, prepare to move your bodies. As brother, Jomeo 5 will sing the song of meditation for us. And then Pastor Richards will speak to God's people today. God bless you. Find the answer. And he will indeed come through for you. I too would like to give my coat of condolence to the family. Pastor Delgado Black would have loved to be here today, but based on prayer engagement, he's not able to make it. And he has asked me to fill a slot. I was looking at the time and I didn't even realize that the time was so far spent. We have been here for over two and a half hours. And they taught me in school to be temperate. And so I don't want to keep you no later than maybe another 10 minutes. So please bear with me. As I, somebody said no as I speak with you, but I'm going to be totally honest. I, I sat there and I listened to, to all the songs that were sung. And I must say that some persons don't like to be identified. They don't like to be, you know, placed on the spot. But I don't think God would forgive me if I don't tell Miss Lorraine Johnson that God needs you. Amen. And if you... If you, 
If you don't, my sister, the gift that you have, it will be taken away from you. And I don't mean to flatter you, but I have to tell you, you have a beautiful voice, and that voice belongs in church. And my sister over there, I don't know your name, but if you have not given your heart to the Lord as yet, my sister, God is calling you to do the same. He's calling you to do the same. I want to ask you three questions before I speak to you today. Number one, do you know where you will die? Number two, do you know when you will die? Number three, do you know how you will die? I want you to contemplate on these three questions as I speak to you under the caption, will your change come? Will your change come? Bow your heads with me as we pray. Divine God and our Father, we come before you at this moment to hear a word from you. Oh, Father, I'm not worthy to speak your words. But if you can use a dumb donkey, you can use me. And so I ask, Lord, that you will put words in my mouth suitable for the hearts of your children. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Let God's children say, Amen. Amen. If you brought your Bibles with you, turn with me to Job chapter 14. And I'll read in your hearing verse 14. That's Job chapter 14. And I'll read in your hearing verse 14. The Bible says, If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days... If a man die, let me read it again. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my hard service will I wait until my change come. Will your change come? Permit me, my brothers and my sisters, to tell you that the book of Job is a very interesting book. The book of Job helps us to understand the futility of life. The book of Job helps us to, to understand that today we can be well and flourishing and tomorrow all that we have can be taken away. The book of Job helps us to, to understand that it is futile to live for the temporal things of life. The book of Job helps us to understand that the temporal things of life cannot suffice for the things that we need or the things that we desire. The things that our hearts long for cannot be satisfied from this life. But the book of Job helps us to understand that, that in the midst of life there, there is death. And you know the life of Job. The Bible says that Job was the richest man to have lived in all the men of the east. Job had cattle. Job had riches. Job had everything at his disposal. But, as, but in a single day, Job lost all his children. In a single day, Job lost all his assets. In a single day. The brother lost everything that he has worked for. What do you do when the things that make you comfortable are taken away from you? What do you do when the people whom you have labored with and for when life comes down to your dying moment and those persons cannot be found at your side? What do you do when the things that you hope for and the expectations that you have are not met? You see Job would have lost everything that he had. But what I'm here to tell you is that Job's life was not consist of the things that he possessed. Because the brother said, naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return. The Lord had given up and the Lord had taken away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. And when the devil thought that he could kill Job by sores and all pestilence, I hear Job says, I hear Job says, though he slay me, Yet will I trust him. I hear Job says, The worm destroyed the 
his body, look at my eyes, I shall see him. The brother says, I'm not waiting for the temporal things of life. I'm waiting for the eternal. I'm waiting until my change come. I'm waiting until my Jesus come. And I hear Jesus says in John 14, 1 to 3, he says, let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to the pier, a place for you. And if I go, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, and here he may be also. I ask you the question, will your change come? Because we are living in a world where we think about temporal change. We think about renovating our home. We think about changing our car. We think about changing our job. Some of us even think about changing our boyfriend and our girlfriend. But can I say to you today that the most important change is to change from mortal to immortal. And so I hear, I hear Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he says in the Clean of an eye, we shall be changed from mortal to immortality. And I hear him says, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Because Paul recognized that though the, though the righteous may die, when Jesus comes, they shall live again. And Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, he says, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel. And with the chunk of God and the dead and the dead and the dead and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So I stop by the day to tell you, based on the report I receive, that Patricia is not dead, she's but sleeping in Christ because the righteous never die. I said, The righteous never die. I said, The righteous never die. They're just sleeping in Jesus, and I want you to know. One day, one day, a flight will be leaving from this earth, and its destination is glory. And I stop by to tell you that money is not a prerequisite to go on that flight. I stop by the day to tell you that the texture of your skin is not a prerequisite for that flight. The occupation you have is not a prerequisite for that flight. Only one thing you need is the blood of Jesus.
because there is no God like our God. Amidst our intelligence, it's foolishness compared to what you have been doing from time and eternity. And that is why even in this moment of sorrow, as we grieve, we still remember that it is your utterance that is still being lived out in our days. You have said to our parents of old, don't disobey me, because if you disobey me, you're going to die. Yes, we see your hands. Even in death, we see your hand, because you have wrestled with death, and you have died the death, that we should have died eternally, so that our temporal dying, we can have life everlasting. Father in heaven, now we seek your intervention into the lives of all family members at this time. No one can say that our sister Pat did not connect with you before it's too late. Everyone could have sung the same song, and today we did not hang up our our pots on the willow trees, but we took down our hearts, we let out our voices, and we shouted songs of glory and honor and praise because we recognize that you must be praised. And in this Thanksgiving service, Lord, we're asking you to remember, especially the five children. We're asking you to help them to understand that mother has set the example. She has loved hard and she has given all that she could have done so that the country that we live in, the society in which we serve, can be a better place. So Lord, I pray now that for every family member they will remember this day. And even those who are not present when they watch this video, they will remember the life that was lived and a life that was lived to call them back to the Creator God. As we go now to the place of final rest until the judgment day, we don't know if our sister will be called in the first trumpet or the second trumpet. But one thing we know, all of us will have to give an account of the life we live. So therefore, help us now to be intentional about our relationship with you. Father, forgive us where we have sinned and come short of your glory. And just in case, there's somebody who needs to give their lives to you now. Let them just, in the quietness of the moment, give their hearts to you because you are the one who answers all prayer under all circumstances. Thank you for answering our prayer. Thanks for hearing us. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Blessed Holy Ghost, and the people of God say, Amen. Amen.
Let me cross you and start the marching.
Up our shoulder we are going up with that. Up our shoulder we are going up. Up there, up there.
because my family and my friends know that I've done my best. So, thank you guys for coming and the pastor can take over. Love you know. Thanks for the support. And after this, we're going by farm pain and we're going to eat and drink. God is good. Love my family. All who are stretching their hands, they know. Love my family. Love my friends. Who who won't come near on a farm? My family, them come from all over the world. My friends, my aunt, my all of my siblings. George, you can't even come over here. She's so stressed out there. My uncle, cousin, egos, you don't know. But my tank, you know, all, doggy, everybody, me don't want to leave out nobody. You know, just stay with me. Family then come from St. Elizabeth, Kingston, all over. Yes. Just give thanks here, near and abroad. Thank you know, all. God bless you. Know. Best thing, well done. Then Yeah, man, she, she man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, your sister. Yeah, man, your sister. Yeah, yeah, man. Your sister, Paul. Your sister. 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 Pastor, come here, thing. Pastor, you want to come here, right? Yeah, All right. Thank you so much. We are happy to celebrate the life of our dear sister Patricia Davis. And we're happy to know that you are here celebrating in this solemn service. I invite you to bow your heads as we pray. Let us pray, Divine God and our Father. We thank you for the life of your child. Oh, Father, as we're about to commence this solemn service at the graveside, we pray, Lord, that you may lead us and that you may direct us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You can lower it. For as much as God in his infinite love and wisdom has permitted our dear sister Patricia Davis to have fallen asleep in Christ. I do tenderly commit her body to the ground with the sure and certain hope of a joyous resurrection when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shall appear in his glory. Then this body of our humiliation shall be made like unto his glorious body. Wherefore he is able to subdue all things. At this time, we are going to sing a few songs on our program while the workmen will do their thing in sealing our sister's tomb. God bless you richly. I now invite the singers to come and sing as we continue the service. So the, song, the songs are on the back of your program. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. We'll start with that one. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks on, eternal bright and dim, when the seas of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is fall up yonder I'll be there. When the roll is fall up yonder, when the roll is fall up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On the bright and cloudless morning, when the day in Christ shall rise, and the glory of His resurrection shares. When the chosen one shall gather to the homies from the sky, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the masters from the dawn of sickness. 
Christ the mover, bring out the seven bells when I get there. You got to move, you got to move, you got to move, you got to move, you got to move. when I get ready, you got to move. You got to move, you got to move, you got to move. You may be poor, you may be high, you may be low, when God gets ready, you gotta move. You may be black, you may be white, you may be thick, you may be sweating, when God gets ready, you gotta move. You gotta move, you gotta move, you gotta move, you gotta move. Come on now. Amen. 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 We just me to express the All right, thank you so much. The relatives of our dear sister would like to express the following words their gratitude and their thoughts of love towards you the family of the late patricia davis wishes to express our sincere appreciation to everyone whether it was a whether it was a prior said a visit or even a phone call they want to also express their gratitude for everyone showing up today and for paying your respect to our dear sister we trust and hope that as the family continue to grieve the loss of their loved one, that you will continue to remain close, continue the prayers, continue the call, continue the, continue the visit, because it is never a nice feeling when you have lost a loved one, especially a mother. I can't tell you what, I fe what it feels like because my mom is still alive. I can't empathize with you. I can only sympathize with you. And I know that in all that you go through, the Lord will be there with you. So keep courage. As you go from here, remember that the presence of the Lord go with you and he always live and abide with you. God bless you richly.
Oh my God.